guy. All right, mate. How are we looking? Oh, not so bad. Yeah, you okay? Yeah, sound. Excellent. Right. What's happening? Well, you've been to my studio weekend since Shrewsbury. I have once or twice, mate. Oh, I've seen once or twice, exactly. Um, so now we're going to look at how the oil is used. Yeah. And today we're going to be looking at the passenger car market. Go on. And specifically engine oils, okay? Um, well, there's different generations of engine oil. So if you look back over the last 40 years, the changes in engine design for the passenger car has changed quite dramatically. Probably more so in the last 10 or 15 years, really, Go on. with emissions legislation. When did, did we first start seeing multigrades? Well, multigrades, well, well, they oil first appeared back in the, the early 1960s. Oh, right. Yeah, the, the right, first right. 2050 appeared all the way back then. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of the technology... Before then, we was putting winter oils in. Oh, absolutely. It was a seasonal oil change, yeah. So thinner oil, monograde in the winter. Go on, what's the difference? What would you have? What weight would you have in the winter uh, compared to the summer? 30 grade, 20, 30 grades back in the day. In the summer? Uh, that'd be in the winter. Right. Okay, and then in the summer, you'd go for a thicker monograde. Yes. To keep your oil pressure up, basically. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Go on, what sort of thing? Is? Uh, a 20, 30 in the winter? Yeah, well, it would be yeah, a 20 or a 30 grade in the winter, a 40 on. or 50 grade in the summer. Basically. Right, okay, okay, okay. And then yeah. the multigrade came out. But back then, the engines were quite simple still. But it's only really during the sort of late 1970s. On, it, what, what do you mean? The, the, same, the, the same engine? Yeah, but it's all the modifications. A lot of it for... So it's got his bang blow still. Fish, you know, it is, you yeah, know what the I mean? basics Nothing, Nothing's changed, has it, but really? You look at EGR, EGR came along. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Then you had turbocharging. Yeah, that's every, everything after the engine, though, yeah. isn't it? Everything, but you know, the, the engine hasn't changed. The engine change hasn't changed, but the bolt-ons and the modifications for fuel efficiency and increased power output has put on. demand on the lubricants which right. weren't there originally go on those old monograids wouldn't do the job now so say you know you've seen the advent of egr turbocharging variable valve lift technology yeah, yeah and then yeah. of course you've got all the things such as um diesel particulate filters fitted oh, now we know about them, gasoline mate. particulate filters when did we first start seeing egr systems then EGR was quite well. It was around sort of like seventies, you know. Well, you'd see EGR yeah. in the seventies. There, there, some, some some manufacturers put their heads above the parapet and they came out with variable valve lift and EGR and turbocharging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but a lot of that is now sort of mainstream technology for oh, most yeah. manufacturers. Would you want, would you, what, how many mainstream cars have been naturally aspirated now? Oh, not many. Everything's oh, turbocharged, isn't it? Turbocharged Everything. or supercharged, yeah. The, the Small the, engines, yeah. turbo. It's all about getting you know, caught out of a pint pot now, as you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, the, the cars we've got behind us today, so obviously we've got a 1990s T5. And that's turbo. Turbo, turbo yeah. Well, this is, I mean, that was multi-valve. I mean, of course, before we had multi-valve, of course, it was, you know, one, one, one um, inlet valve, one exhaust yeah, valve. Yeah, now, yeah. You know, it's four valves per cylinder, so we never had that. So, so that kind of increased demand has put um, a different stress level on the lubricants. And of course, as we've moved from the, the 1990s to, to the, the BMW behind you, which is 2014 plate, um, there's a massive amount of technology on that you now in the space of a you know, short number of years, really. Go on. So now we've got something with, that's by turbo, there's two turbos on there. It'll be DPF, it'll be AdBlue technology in there. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, a, there's a massive increase, and of course, power output huge as well you know this is a three litre diesel right um so but all those those sort of stresses and demands put upon the lubricant means the lubricant technology had to evolve with the engine technology okay. as well okay right so so those simpler days you know the 1990s called this would be on a sort of a 10 w40 uh, engine oil for example quite nice simple kind of formulation okay but now you know certainly so sort of the oems now have a bigger part to play the original equipment manufacturers so they have their own specifications right so at one time it used to be a global specification they still are global specifications but the oems now put in their own sort of name to specification requirements and you've got to keep up with all of that keep up with all of that yeah so you know you, you still make oils for oems don't you, you the, yeah we, we still yeah we still have involvement with oems yeah absolutely yeah and so but this, I, this well, I know you do on the tractors and the trucks, but the yeah. cars as well. Oh, cars. I mean, um, you'll see, I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole number of 5W30s, all different. All, or every OEM has a different little whistle and bell they want on there to protect their own if particular it's not the right vehicles. one, they'll, they'll avoid the warranty, Absolutely. something like that. Right, okay. But these vehicles, of course, these are out of warranty. And, and, but that doesn't oh. mean you shouldn't treat them any less than the, if oh, they were brand not. new. So, and you know maintenance and regular maintenance with the correct um, either replacement parts or consumables or lubricants is the way of keeping these on the on the road long pennywise pound foolish absolutely those t-shirts are coming by the way right, got, okay, i am okay, having okay. that i am having that <laughs> so so it is important even though it's obviously this is you know nearly 10 years old this bmw and obviously the you know the volvo is you know over 25 years old now yep. really um 
is to still service them with the correct lubricants because that's what they would have had in when they came off the production line and the yes. engines haven't changed so there's no reason why you should want to put a lesser quality lubricant in there no, of course not you still need to have that higher performance level that, that sort of higher specification level which is suited to these engines so so it's all about regular maintenance and, and proper maintenance essentially but but the the changes which are taking place are quite dramatic now with this, this particular market um, so there are other episodes where we look at newer technology but in this particular case it's really making sure that people understand the importance of co correct engine oil technology even for these older engines because there's still a whole host of things an engine oil's got to do you know you're talking about detergency for keeping the yeah, hot parts of the yeah, engine clean yeah. detergency um, is normally coupled with a dispersancy so all the, the, the things you wash you know you clean off go on you want to suspend those so the dispersants disperses those, those bits and bonds in the lubricant, mm -hmm. which as it travels to the oil filter, the oil filter takes out. So you need to be looking after all that. Um, Anti-wear performance, especially on cams, anywhere there's a bit of shock loading going on and you can't get a good oil film established and, and cams with, it, with the cam lobe slapping around, you know, yeah, it can be supersonic yeah, yeah. speed, you know, the tip of that cam lobe. Yes, yeah. um, you're relying on additive technology to stop metal to metal contact. So you, you, you have that in place. You have to make sure you have good, um, what we call total base number, which is the ability to neutralise harmful acids which are formed in the combustion chamber. Yeah, because even though we're on low sulphur fuels now and ultra low sulphur fuels, um, if you're burning fuel with sulphur in there, you'll get sulphurous and sulphuric acid formed, which are obviously corrosive. Yes. yes. So the oil's got to be able to combat those as well so it needs to neutralize the acids because uh, you don't want those getting down oh, into so it's the not sun. just so the, the engine you know they haven't changed but the fuel that we're putting in them has changed so we've got to yeah. change the oil and keep up with the oil to account for the modern types of fuel yeah i mean i mean modern types of fuel are obviously a lot better than 20 30 years ago but there's still that side effect of potential acidic corrosion if you don't look after it right so they always got even to do with, that. even with the diesel would you call it a better diesel now it's not got sulfur in it uh, I if, that caused if, more if you got, yeah, if you've got zero, yeah, well, this, this, this goes back to the old days, the, uh, the, the way the old di distribut distributor pumps on diesels used, on. used the, uh, the, the sulfur in there to lubricate them. Yes. But yes. of course, we're now common rail, you know, common rail came through. So indirect fuel injection on diesels and, and port injection on petrols has now become direct injection. Yeah. So the common rail systems, of course, you're not relying on the sulfur because you don't have a distribution pump. Okay. You know, it's, 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 all, solenoid, it's, yeah, it's yes. all solenoid activated now, so, um, so you don't need that lubricity from sulphur anymore. So you can go to, to low uh, or right, even okay. zero sulphur fuels, but depending on where you are geographically, zero sulphur fuels may not be available. So, you know, if there is sulphur in there, you need to combat the side effects of that potential acidic corrosion which can take place. So, because obviously you still need a good oil film for the bearings, you know, under load when they're running. So. So th there's, a, there's a lot going on inside an oil formulation. So, so you, you have all the basics, but as I said, then you have all the whistles and bells on top of that for whichever OEM you're talking about. Um, but it's still about picking the right oil, whether it's a 1996 or a 2014 model, because it'll keep it on the road for another 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and bearing I'm in more mind- more than 10 years out of that, I'm telling you. Well, well hey. the, the average car on the road now in the UK is 10 years old. You know, pe pe yeah, pe people are keeping their, their cars longer and longer now. Uh, they're not changing right. them every couple, two or three right. years, which used to be the trend at one time, you know. Um, Honestly, that's right. It's yeah, that yeah. It is. so people are hanging on to them longer. So it's even more important if, if you're, you're hanging on to a car that you like or, you know, convert, you know for, for financial reasons yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. move on is that you continue to service it correctly and with the right engine lubricant. And it'll keep you, it'll keep you right. It'll keep you going, yeah, keep, you, keep, yeah, you, keep yeah. you going, absolutely. So, yeah, so, so that, that's, that's another kind of change in kind of buying habits in the UK is people aren't changing their cars every time. Hang on to them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hanging yeah, on yeah. to them, of course, yeah. And with the uncertainty about, you know, emissions and, and you know, banning of petrol and diesel cars and all this yeah, kind of... Yeah, they've that on now. Well, it was 2030. 30, they have moved it back, 2035 yeah. now, yeah, I think, yeah. but I'm sure that'll and get... And Europe's relaxing its, its view on it. In fact, in Europe now, they're, they're not even talking about banning ICEs, internal combustion engines. There we go. Just right. the fuel, just the fuel that goes into it. Ah, so it'll be synthetic fuels and that yeah, sort of paper. Yeah, because as somebody okay. quite right, rightly said, there's nothing wrong with an internal combustion engine, just the fuel that it burns. Exactly. And you know exactly. that. It's a mechanically sound piece of yeah, engineering. It is. But it is, it is. if you can get it to burn a different uh, um, fuel, which is either 
uh, zero, you know, it's... Um, oh, well, that's, it's fanta that's fantastic, and I'm all for it. Carbon but zero, the, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, but really, nothing beats an electric motor. The only problem with an electric motor is what we're going to feed it with. Yeah, because so, the other temptation, of course, is when a vehicle goes out of warranty, is to go to a cheaper oil. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Oh, it's an old car now, there's wear and tear on it. Let's go to a cheaper oil and save some money. But that is a, a false economy. Of course you know? it is. It'll cost you in the end. Yeah, because, it especially up at that time, you've been maintaining that vehicle, you know, as, as, as scheduled by the manufacturer. Why, why move to a cheaper oil? And of course, if no, you do anything, that, that's the, it needs the better quality stuff, the older yeah. it gets. And, and that will just cause its early demise by moving to a cheaper will. oil. You know, as you say, you know, what is it, penny... Penny-wise, pound penny, forward. Exactly yeah, right, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, you've got to try and pot off the inevitable, which is getting yeah, to the scrap yard. You've got to try and put it off for as long as you can. And like they always say, oil is cheap compared to metal. So, you know, yeah, why, yeah, why yeah. would you, you, exactly, you know, you, you bring exactly. on the, you know, the demise of the engine quicker? So, yeah, so cheap oils are not the solution to an outer warranty vehicle. Still use the OEM specified products. 100%. So if you'd like to see any more content like this or videos with Guy, then visit our Morris Lubricants website or our YouTube channel.